Did you hear about the farm dog that really liked to strip corn? He was part husky. <laughs> All right, tonight we're talking mellow corn. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Heaven Hill's Mellow Corn. Now, this is an interesting bottle. So for years, people have been telling me I needed to drink this bottle. I needed to get my hands on this. But these would be in the same vein as people who were telling me I should try Johnny Walker Red again or give proper uh, 12 another chance or go try Mellow Corn. Like it just had that same feel to it. And I, being paranoid, was thinking that people were trying to trick me into drinking something terrible again, especially when you look at this label and judging a book by its cover is not right. And I'm aware of it. I even just said something very recently in a video that I did about what whiskeys to buy to buy things with terrible labels, because that's how you find hidden gems. But I didn't take my own advice. You know, I looked at this thing. I thought of uh, mellow yellow soda and I just never picked it up, especially for 13 to 17 dollars. It just didn't feel right. But I was pleasantly surprised, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, here's a few things about this bottle that you should know. Mellow corn has been being produced since 1945. It's a straight corn whiskey that was aged in used oak barrels. Heaven Hills actually stated that it was old Evan Williams barrels that they use. It's bottled in bonds, so we know it's more than four years aged and exactly 100 proof, which it is. As for the mash bill, there's a little bit of a discrepancy about what exactly the mash bill is. However, people are smart. They figured it out, right? So this is 80% corn, 8% rye, and 12% barley, which is only 2% more than their typical bourbon. So if you like Heaven Hill products, this is going to be in line with about what you're expecting, with one caveat. Because it uses the used oak, it's not going to taste quite the same. We'll get into that in just a minute. So as far as the history goes, there's really not much in the way of history here either. It just kind of has been around for a while. It is one of the most common corn whiskeys that you'll be able to find in the US. So if you look, you should be able to find this. Let's go into the nosing and the tasting and just kind of see, because I've talked about this quite a bit. Nice little screw top. I actually have come to not mind that so much. I remember when I first started the channel, I kind of bad mouthed screw tops only because it kind of took detracted from uh, what I felt whiskey was supposed to kind of feel like, you know, like you pop a cork, you nice and even the synthetic ones I didn't love. I've come to kind of not care, <laughs> mostly because actually like a screw top is a little bit more reliable. I think you break enough corks and you start to appreciate what a screw top can do. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, this is 100 proof, so this could be a little bit of alcohol, but more so in this just by virtue of being a corn whiskey, I've always found, yes, the sweetness comes across, but there's almost always just this bit of kind of an unrefinedness to corn whiskeys that give it this a little bit of an astringent kind of ethanol, uh, powerful more so in the alcohol than it, than it, I guess it just never gets a chance to mellow out properly. So you end up getting a lot of alcohol on the nose, but this is a nuanced whiskey, believe it or not, at like $13. This is something that if you want to pick out the nuance in this, you've got to spend some time with it and don't expect to find a lot. But I will admit I've got a fault. Only one. <laughs> but I can't pick out too much nuance in almost any corn whiskey that I've tried. I've just never had very much luck with it. And in this case, it's not really much different. Basically, I'm getting classic bourbon notes, but they're all very mild, you know, caramel, vanilla, butterscotch, no oak, which is something, but mostly it's just sweetness and alcohol. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Okay, so first sip of the night, I've got an opinion, but I just want to take one more just to kind of have something other than that first sip really just sting, you know? There's a saying I've kind of started really appreciating, which is um, you taste on your second sip. And I think that's good. I actually, uh, I find especially with higher ABV, you want to think about it a lot more on your second sip because the first one's just going to punch you in the mouth. <laughs> All right. Talking about the taste here, what this tastes like, <laughs> first off, is burning. 
it's it's kind of a it drinks very hot even for 100 proof which is you know 50 percent abv but it drinks hotter than that it feels like alcohol is on my tongue so going back to the nuance concept though i've spent a little bit of time you can see i haven't drank like a ton of this but i've drank enough to formulate an opinion it's mostly just classic bourbon notes with sweetness that corn gives it. That's about it. But if you're tasting this by yourself, you're going to taste just alcohol at first. And then maybe you'll discover a little bit of vanilla. Um, there's kind of a green banana thing going on, like an underripe banana uh, as well. But there's also it's just it tastes like bourbon that's really watered down. And that makes sense because it's not getting nearly as much characteristic from the bourbon barrel. But that's might not sound like a glowing review, but I will just kind of put this out there and I'll, I'll go into the overall in just a minute. Actually, I guess now it's fine. So overall, this for me personally, I think this is probably just to buy it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First off, the price point is hard to beat. It's 100 proof alcohol for, let's just say, an average of $15. That's cool. If you drink a couple of these, you're going to start drinking them faster and faster. You're going to get probably pretty drunk, but you're not going to taste the burn after like the first or second one that you have. So that is almost negated. And for the price point, this is something that people can just kind of get hammered on so much so that I had a fun idea and I'm going to go through a couple of quick things while I do this. So while I was looking at this, oh, you know what? Sorry. I should interrupt myself. I, I think I'm giving it a rating of buy it, right? So go out and buy this. It's, there's no risk. It's fine. And I think that it will be something that you'll be happy to have. It'll probably last you a long time, uh, but it's super cheap. All right. So when I was looking at the label of this thing, all I could think of was the old mellow yellow soda, right? So right there. That's what this looks like to me. And so I said, hey, wouldn't it be kind of fun to get some mellow yellow soda and combine the two and just kind of make like a little mix, right? Now, here's the problem. Mellow yellow changed their label like a bunch of jerks. <laughs> so I actually went on Amazon and I tried to find somebody who was selling it and their their picture was the old mellow yellow can. I'm like, I'm going to get a friggin' soda from like the 90s that somebody just had in their in their garage. It's going to be flat and awful, but I'll do that for the channel because it will look cool. So I ordered it and then this came in instead and I was just like so disappointed. But either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pour this with my whiskey and see if it's any good. I pour it a little heavy because I got some editing to do tonight and I like to drink while I edit. Um, so while I'm doing this, let's see what you guys thought. So out of 894 votes, 7% of you said to stock it, 9% said to buy it, 21% said try it, 9% said to ignore it, and 54% have never had it, which is kind of all over the place. Oh my gosh, that's such a gross color. <laughs> it's green because it's nature. <laughs> it's so healthy for you. Oh boy. All right, nice and full. Drinking a caffeinated soda at 10 o'clock at night on a work night is a great idea. Oh my gosh, look at that wonderful color. It actually, uh, nah, it's not super, super close, but it's it's there. It's it's in the realm. Um, all right, let's have a sip of this. And uh, actually, I kind of want to do something else fun too. So <laughs> bottoms up. Uh, cheers. Sorry for the crunch. Um, well, I've had a couple of these mellow yellows between, you know, getting them and filming this and they're not flat. This tastes flat and I think the alcohol just kind of killed that, but that's fine. You get that occasionally or usually in like a Jack and Coke too. Uh, but I never realized how much I missed the fizz in a drink like this. Um, mostly because it makes it not taste like it's flat. <laughs> With a Jack and Coke, at least you've got like a, a pretty heavy flavor from both of those items. This, the mellow corn is totally getting lost in here, which means it's dangerous. Um, so basically you're going to get hammered with tons of energy from the caffeine, which frankly is how I like to drink my, my whiskeys and sodas. I like to get drunk and then uh, make bad decisions quickly. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I wouldn't recommend... I wouldn't recommend chewing ice on, on camera. Wouldn't recommend going out of your way to get some mellow yellow to mix together with the mellow corn here. 
but I'm happy I did it. Um, but a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. So I, I like this idea and I'm going to continue doing this. So if you happen to see my polls, make sure you comment because I want to read some of your comments on, on the channel here. So Wispy Wood says for such a cheap, sorry, for sup such a cheap and ugly product, I thought the casual hype was a joke. Then I tried it and now I need this stocked at all times. I proudly sip it. It is so close to qualifying as a bourbon and the bonded stature makes it respectable in my eyes. Stock it. A public domain says buy it. It's $15 at 100 horsepower. What do you have to lose? I like both of those comments. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm going to stick with my buy it. I think it's something worth trying, but only because I feel like you're going to pay as much for a shot of this at a bar, if you even find it, as you would to buy a bottle. Just buy a bottle, and then now you have 750 mil of, of whiskey. All right. Anyway, thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you had a great time. I certainly did. I'm going to drink this and probably be up till 3 a.m., which is not terribly uh, abnormal for me. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers. What did the corn say when it received a compliment? Aw, shucks. Sorry, I know that was corny. To